Something good. Something good. Something good. What's happening? It's about to be a really good day. The blessing is on the way. It's about to be a real good day. Good morning, TGIF, everybody. It is Friday, <clears throat> and I am just glad about it. Hey, Mommy, good morning. It's good to see you. Um, Papu, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but good morning. Sister Jeanette, good morning. Sister Irene, good morning. Daniela, good morning. Wow, it was great to see you all this morning. Uh, I am excited because it is Friday. Next week is Thanksgiving. Um, I'm excited about um, the upcoming holidays, not just Thanksgiving, but once we get to Thanksgiving, we know that Christmas is around the corner and I love this time of year, like I really do. So, um, and then, you know, in Thanksgiving, we are in the season of being grateful, right? And I've been posting out, you know, uh, posts with gratitude. Um, okay, you're joining us from India. Well, praise God. God bless you and thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's great to have you with us. Welcome. Um, so we're in the season of Thanksgiving and being um, having an attitude of gratitude. And of course, we don't want to wait until Thanksgiving to do that, right? We want to have an attitude of gratitude every single day of our lives. Hey, Sister Lisa, good morning. That's actually one of the things that I admire um, about my husband, Willie. He is just a person who is just grateful all the time, whether it's raining, snowing, cold, warm, um, sun's out, clouds out. He is just, he's grateful. He, he has, a, and, and then he, every day of the week, it's marvelous Monday, terrific Tuesday, wonderful Wednesday, um, fabulous Friday. You know, he just does that. And so when he gets up and he get ready, gets ready to go to work, um, he comes and we pray every morning before he leaves for work. And he always wakes me up. It's you know, fantastic Friday is wonderful Wednesday. So I just love that about him. He he always has an attitude of gratitude and that rubs off on me. And Lord knows I need it um, because I'm not always that, you know, chipper. And, um, you know, quite frankly, I don't always wake up in that mood, right? <laughs> I may wake up with some other things on my mind. So Donna, that's my girl right there. It's good to see you, Donna. Thank you for joining us. So I don't always wake up like that. I'm just being honest. I know y'all are like, oh, Minister Ann, she's always happy new. Nope, I just like you. I have the stuff that I struggle with. I have my um, chipper, right? <laughs> right, Deanna, it's good to see you. Um, you know, I like you, I wake up, you know, stressed out about some things or concerned about some things, something I went to bed thinking about. And so I get up and that's what I think about. So I'm just grateful that this is this is this is who he is. And that is rubbing off on me. If there is anything that I would like to rub off on me, it's that. Um, among other things about him that I admire. So anyway, it's so great to see you all. As you all are coming on, would you do me a favor and just click share, put this video out there um, for others who may be scrolling down Facebook, just looking for a word of hope, looking for a word of encouragement that they may uh, run smack dab into this video and be encouraged, you know, because many of us are going through um some difficult times, you know, many of us are going through some challenging stuff. 
And I don't know about you, but it is the word that I go to to help to keep me anchored, uh, to help shift my perspective, to help me to get refocused. Somebody say refocus. Does anybody as sometimes just need, hey, Kenny, good morning. So we have uh, Kenny from Nigeria. And Kenny, you usually on here with us quite a bit. So it's good to see you. And then we also have uh, someone from India. So praise the Lord, right? Thank God that the internet goes all around the world. So it is so awesome to have you all with us. Um, as I was saying, please click share. Let's put this out in the atmosphere because we never know who might be uh, sitting in a really tough decision and who might be making a decision to give up. And we don't want them to give up. We want them to know that there is hope and hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. Sister Gladys, good morning. It's great to see you all. Yes, happy early Thanksgiving. Yep, definitely looking forward to next week. Hopefully you all have some great Thanksgiving things planned. And even if you don't, even if you're just going to chill at home and, and eat a burger, <laughs> do so in the spirit of being grateful. Amen. So let's uh, go ahead. I'm going to pray and we're going to jump into this word that the Lord has given me uh, to share you know, with you all this morning. So I thank you all again for being here. Father God, we just thank you for this day, God. Our hearts are you know, running over with gratitude that we even made it, God, that we are on the wake up list today, God. Somebody somewhere you know, left work yesterday and didn't make it home for, for dinner, God. Somebody laid down and didn't wake up this morning, God, but yet here we are. And we are grateful. We never take it for granted, God, when you breathe your breath of life into our lungs each and every day, God. Some people, their lungs are not working correctly, God, but we thank you for your breath of life that supersedes all natural, that you, your breath of life is supernatural, God. And we thank you for the supernatural breath of life that is in each of us today, God, that we not only have we been able to wake up, God, but we're able to talk, Father God. We're able to move. We're able to dress ourselves. God, we're able to log on and come in fellowship and be a part of, of this time this morning, God. So we say thank you, God. And I pray for every person now under the sound of my voice, Father God, that if they are traveling, if they're on their way to work, God, if they're already at work, that your hedge of protection will be around them. Keep them, get them there safely, get them back home safely this afternoon, Father God. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now speak, Heavenly Father, we are listening. We want to hear from you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And somebody just say amen this morning. Yes. Yes. Amen, Sister Jeanette. It is. The word is definitely our mirror and I look into it. And some days I'm not too proud of what I see, but it's an opportunity to readjust, to refocus, to realign. And other days I look at it and I'm like, all right, God, you're doing this thing. <laughs> I'm growing, I'm changing, I'm transforming, I'm becoming more like Jesus. And what I see in the mirror of his word is encouraging. But can I just tell you all, regardless to whether we're hitting the mark or not, God loves us so much that he gave us his word so that we can look and see. And when we look into the word, the idea is to be able to see the reflection of Jesus looking back at us. Amen. So listen. This word that I want to share with you this morning, I won't be before you long at all. Uh, we are going to be in the book of James, James chapter one, and I'm going to read verses two through seven. You've probably heard this before. Um, I'm going to read it in a, a slightly different translation. It's going to be in the voice translation. So if you have an app like maybe Bible Gateway, um, when you have a chance, you know, check out that translation as it does sometimes give a little more clarity to the scriptures. And, you know, and I like um, looking at the different translations, but I always do go back and kind of compare it to the um, the New King James or the King James as that um, is the original translations. And sometimes some of the translations can kind of get a little off, you know, so I want to make sure that whatever translation I'm looking at that even though it may give me a different way to look at it, that it's not 
um, taking me away from what the scripture actually intended. So I like this particular translation is James chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. If somebody can put that in the chat for me, I would appreciate it. And hear the word of God. This is James speaking. Um, James said, don't run from tests and hardships, brothers and sisters. He said, don't run from it. As difficult as they are, you will ultimately find joy in them. If you embrace them, your faith will blossom under pressure. He said, if, you, if we embrace hardships and tests and don't run from it, that eventually our faith will blossom under pressure and teach you true patience as you endure. Because it definitely takes some patience when we're under the gun, when we're under pressure, when things are not happening the way that we hoped, when we need something to come through, someone to come through, when there's a deadline looming, right? We need patience. And so it says our faith will blossom under pressure and teach us true patience as we endure. And then he says, and true patience, somebody say true patience, and true patience bought on by endurance will equip you to complete the long journey and cross the finish line. Hey, Cathedra, God bless you. How many of you want to cross the finish line? I know I want to. And I thank God that crossing the finish line is not about who's the fastest, right? The scripture tells us it's not who's the fastest that's going to cross is the ones who what endure and keeps going. So it says in true patience bought on by endurance will equip you, Cathedral, will equip you, Daniela, will equip you, Jeanette, will equip you, mommy. It says it will equip you to complete the long journey because for many of us, it's been a long journey. And to do what? And to cross the finish line. And we're, here's how we're going to cross the finish line. We're not just going to cross it, right? You know, in the races and stuff we see today, people cross the finish line and they cross it and they get a trophy or, you know, whatever the prize is, right? But we know as Christians, he's telling us that we're going to cross the finish line and we're going to cross it mature. We're going to cross it complete and wanting nothing. That's beautiful. So we're not going to run this race and get on the other side and be like, gosh, I'm still missing something, right? He says that we're going to cross, complete the journey, cross the finish line, mature, complete, and wanting nothing. Verse 5, and if you don't have all the wisdom needed for this journey, because we need wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. We need wisdom for this journey. He says, if you don't have all the wisdom needed for this journey, then all you have to do is ask for it. Ask God for it. And he says, and God will grant all that you need. He gives lavishly and he never scolds us for asking. Isn't that amazing? Because sometimes we're asking God for wisdom about the same thing. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm going back to God about the same thing. It was the same thing last week, maybe the same thing uh, a month ago. And I'm, But it says he will never scold us. He wants us to ask for wisdom. You're in a situation and, it, and it, it doesn't seem like it's changing. You're in a situation and maybe you started to do better, but now you, you've reverted back to some ways that you're not proud of, whatever it is. God's not going to scold you for asking. Ask again and keep asking for wisdom. Verse six, the key is, this is so good, that your request is anchored by your single-minded commitment to God. This is important because it's not enough to keep going to God and asking for wisdom, but we have to make sure that he is the only source of wisdom that we are consulting. In other words, we can't keep asking God for wisdom, but we are looking for counsel and wisdom from our best friends. 
or even counsel and wisdom from our pastor. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying your pastor is not God. Your best friend is not God. When we go to God, we need to go to him single-minded, believing that when we ask him, right, we're committed to receiving his answer and implementing what he, what he speaks to us. So it says the key is that your request be anchored by your single-minded commitment to God, not commitment to your plan B, not commitment to your own strength, your own power, your own wisdom, your own ability, your own experience. He said, but single-minded commitment to God. Those who depend only on their own judgment are like those who are lost on the seas, carried away by any wave or picked up by any wind. In other words, he says, when we are depending upon ourselves, we're like wishy-washy. You ever heard that, that phrase? You know, we just kind of go with the, you know, and you're talking about full of emotions. One minute you're up, next minute you're down. One minute you feel okay, next minute you're crying. Next minute, you know what I'm saying? That's just kind of being wishy-washy, being tossed, you know, to and fro. And he says, um, he says, those who depend on their own judgment are like those who are lost at sea, carried away by any wave or picked up by any wind. And those adrift on their own wisdom shouldn't assume that the Lord will rescue them or bring them anything. In other words, when we are coming to God, if we are not coming singly minded, wholly committed to, believing wholeheartedly that he will not only answer our prayer, but give us the wisdom. If, if, if we're not coming to him like that, we shouldn't expect him to answer. That's what the word says. That if you're coming to God with doubt, if you're coming to God with disbelief, if you're coming to God with another plan in your pocket, just in case God doesn't answer when and how you want, you, can't, you shouldn't expect God to answer. That's some good stuff right there. Because sometimes we are, we, we're praying, but we're praying in doubt. Sometimes we're praying, but we really don't believe what we're asking God for. We really don't believe that God would be willing to do that for us. It's not that we don't believe that he's all powerful and that he can. Sometimes we just flat out don't believe that he will really do it for us. So today, I just want to talk to you from the topic, using the topic, blossom under pressure. Somebody say, God, help me to blossom under this pressure. Help me to bloom. Help me to blossom. Help me to develop under the pressure. Whatever the pressure is, and you may not be under pressure right now, but I have news for you. Just keep living because the pressure comes. The pressure is always there. The pressure comes to conform. The pressure comes to sometimes lose our, you know, come out of our character, say something we know we shouldn't say, do something we know we shouldn't do, feel something we know we shouldn't feel. The pressure comes. The enemy, that's all he's all about all day long is applying pressure. The enemy, that's all he's doing all day long is making suggestions. He can't make us do anything, but he can apply the pressure by speaking negatively into our ear, by telling us we need to take matters into our own hands, by telling us that person don't care about you. You need to take care of yourself by telling you, oh, that person, you can't trust them. You understand, this is what the enemy does. All day long is applying the pressure. And so we have to learn how to blossom under pressure. And we often talk about, you know, um, blooming and, and blossoming when we talk about like trees and plants, right? We've got a lot of trees and plants in our backyard and we love to see when they bloom and we love to see when they blossom. And, and if they're not blooming and blossoming, right? Mommy and I look at each other and go, oh my goodness, what do we need to do? Does it need more water? For me, I look, does it need more plant food? You know, does it need more sun? Is it not in the right spot? I'm just saying we're looking for those trees and for those plants to bloom and blossom. And so we, we look for the leaves to appear, but there, there are several different definition, definitions for the word blossom. And I want to share one of them with you this morning. I, I saw in the different definitions that to blossom means to come to a peak period or a stage of development. To blossom means to come to 
a stage of development. In other words, we come to a new level of growth. Somebody say growth. Um, a new level of maturity, right? And James is telling us in this scripture, right, that we're going to have trials, we're going to have tribulations, and we're going to have hardships. But when we have those, it shouldn't stunt our growth. That when we have those times, that uh, when we lean upon God, when we depend upon God, we should be able to blossom. We should be able to develop. We should be able to go to another stage of development, even when the pressure is on. That it shouldn't cause us to turn back right? It, it shouldn't cause us to, to stop growing. Uh, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't cause us to digress. In fact, it should cause us to bloom and blossom all the more. Now, of course, our development, right? How we develop and it relies upon who and what we're depending upon and leaning on and even what we're gleaning from. You know, and it's, it's, listen, it is not cliche to talk about getting in the word, but here's the thing. We not only want to get into the word, but we want the word to get in us. So it's not enough to just quote scriptures. We have to live scriptures. You understand? And so a part of our growth and our development is to be able to know the word of God, know who God is as the word shows us his character, and then know who we are as the word shows us who we are to God, what we mean to God, the promises that he says that belong to us. And so what we're gleaning from what we're depending upon, what we're leaning on, it matters according to our growth and our development and our ability to blossom, right? So James is saying we should blossom, we should develop under pressure. Well, what should we develop? He tells us in the scripture. He says that our faith is what will blossom under the pressure. Now, let me tell you, that's, that's not an easy one because oftentimes when hardships come and, and pressure, uh, you know, hits us and unexpected and illness and, and disappointments, when that stuff hits, the first thing that takes a beating, you know, takes a beating is our faith because we begin to question God. Well, God, are you, are you hearing me? God, are you, are you still for me? God, are you still going to fulfill the promise? You promised me this, God, but yet as I'm looking at it, it doesn't look anything like what you promised, God. This doesn't look like what you spoke to me in the midnight hour. This doesn't look like what I read in the word. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And so he's saying that when these things happen, that instead of our faith going in the opposite direction, that our faith needs to go to a new level of growth. He says it's, that's important, right? That because our faith, having faith, y'all listen to, to what James is saying, having faith, our faith will teach us true patience and true patience will enhance and improve our ability our endurance our ability to keep going see that's why some people who lose faith and lose hope they give up god forbid they take their own lives they do they do stuff because they feel hopeless and so james is telling us that our faith Maintaining our faith under pressure is important because it gives us the patience that we need to keep pushing, to keep going. Even though I'm sick, I don't feel like keep going, that you continue to endure. Even though this marriage is tough, you continue to endure. Even though my child is out there and I'm, I, I don't even know if they're going to get saved, you, you got to keep, you got to keep enduring. I don't have a job right now. You got to keep enduring. Come on, somebody. My money is looking funny, but I got to keep enduring. This is what is saying that that our faith will teach us true patience so we can continue to keep going and not give up and then he says when we don't give up right when our true patience helps our endurance that that equips us to complete the long journey and cross the finish line. Anybody like me? It's been a long journey. And I do want to cross the finish line. And he says, not just cross the line, but cross the line mature. 
Come on, somebody say mature. And maturity is not about our age, right? We're talking about being mature in Christ. He says we will cross that finish line mature, complete, and wanting nothing. He says all of this. He says this is why he says don't run from the test. That's how the scripture started. He says don't run from it. I know you want to run. I know you want to sit down in a corner somewhere. I know you want to lay down in your bed and just cover up, pull the covers over you. You don't want to pull the drapes. You don't want to let the sun. Yeah, I know it is tough. But he says don't run from it. Because when we run from the test, we're running from our opportunity to grow our opportunity to develop, our opportunity to mature. Listen, we can't keep being babes in Christ now. At some point, we got to grow up, right? Paul said it got to a point that he had to put away childish things. And when you, you're talking about putting away childish things, you know, uh, you know, children are just kind of fun loving and everything is la la la. But it comes a point we got to get serious about this. So we got to get serious about our walk. We got to get serious about our witness. We got to get serious about the example that we're being. And we are not going to be able to be effective if we are not growing and developing and maturing in Christ. We cannot remain babes, right? Our witness, that's so important. So, the last thing I want to say that in all of this, in all of this, right, he could, it could be that when we're going through hardship, that the word tells us ask for peace. I mean, who doesn't want peace when you're going through hardship, right? Uh, the word could tell us, you know, when you're going through hardship, ask for joy. Does who doesn't want joy, right? But in all those things, it it, it says that. It, the scripture tells us to ask for wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. I thought it was interesting that the thing that James encourages us to ask for during a tough time is for wisdom and not all that other stuff, the joy and the peace. Because guess what? In reading and understanding this, I recognize that as long as we have wisdom, that joy and that peace will follow. Because wisdom, as James explains it, is the ability to live life well and listen, make good decisions. Do you know that a lot of times my peace comes from when I know I've made a good decision? Even if it was a tough decision, I have peace because I know it was a good decision. I know it was a decision that was full of wisdom. I know it was a decision that God led me to make. So it's our ability to live life well and make good decisions. And, and wisdom, listen, it doesn't come from old age. <laughs> it doesn't come from hard knocks, right? Wisdom begins with knowing and depending absolutely on God. And the word tells us God is never stingy. That if we ask for it, he's going he's gonna to supply the wisdom we need when we ask. But here's the thing. If we don't ask God for wisdom, then what we end up doing is trying to go it alone without God. And when we do that, then trouble is around the corner looming. You understand? Going it alone is the opposite of asking for wisdom. And when we go it alone, that's when we find ourselves in, in an emotional roller coaster. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Man, you're trying to figure this thing out in your own strength, in your own power, in your own understanding, in your own experience. And we're trying to do this without the wisdom of God. And so now we're hot, now we're cold, now we're up, now we're down, now we're crying, and we're laughing. I mean, we're just going through all these different emotions because we are trying to do it alone. When God says, listen, you need wisdom for this situation. You need wisdom for how to talk to those doctors. You need wisdom for how to talk to that boss. You need wisdom for how to deal with that spouse. You need wisdom for how to talk to your teenager or your adult child. You need wisdom. And with the wisdom of God comes making better decisions. I don't know about you, but I have lived long enough and I have made enough decisions that was not the best decisions. And so now I 
do my best to try to hear from God so that I can have his wisdom to make my decisions. And the scripture tells us that getting wisdom from God is what allows us to blossom and bloom under pressure. Getting wisdom from God allows us to develop even though things are tough, even though they're difficult, even though it may seem impossible, but getting wisdom from God and not running from the test, but allowing our faith, our patience, and our endurance to develop. Listen, if you are feeling the pressure right now, I want to encourage you that this is an opportunity opportunity for you to bloom, develop, blossom, grow. It's an opportunity for your faith to become stronger. It's an opportunity for you to have patience and endurance. That's what this is about. It's not God punishing you. It's God developing you. It's not God punishing me. God is developing me. God is developing you. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for your instructions that helps us to understand that when difficult times come, even though we're kind of wired to want to run from it, Father God, we're to stand flat-footed, stand firm, stand on your promises, God knowing that it's an opportunity to bloom, to blossom, to develop, to mature, to where we lack nothing in you. It's an opportunity to increase our faith and our patience and our endurance so we will keep going and not give up, God. I pray for every person right now who've been struggling in a situation that you have been tempted to, to stop pushing forward, to stop moving forward, to stop believing God, to stop praying to God, to stop expecting. I'm praying for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. May your faith arise in the mighty name of Jesus. May God pour down into you his wisdom so you can continue to make wise decisions that you will no longer rely upon upon your emotions, rely upon your own experience, rely upon your fear, rely upon your worries. Father God, I thank you for this person who's receiving right now, Father God, that they will come to you and they will ask for your wisdom and they will receive it. They will not doubt. They will not be wishy-washy. I thank you, God, that even right now you're speaking to your son, you're speaking to your daughter, and you're telling them that you are not upset with them, that they tried on their own, but they've tried themselves. Now they're going to try you. Now they're going to trust you. They're going to lean upon you for those things that we try to change within our own power God we place them in your hands today believing that if it, if you can't do it it won't be done and Father God we know your word tells us that nothing is impossible for you so we place what seems impossible into your hands today Father God and then Father God we are going to do our part we're not going to run we're not going to throw in a towel we're not going to give up we're not going to speak negatively we're not going to be angry and be mean and rude and cruel to others because of the pain we're feeling, God. But we're going to give it to you, God. And we're going to allow this test, this trial to develop our patience, to develop our endurance, to increase our faith so that we would become mature in you and wanting nothing. Give us, continue to give us grace and strength for the journey, God. We're still here. <laughs> We're still running, God. We're still pushing, God. <laughs> and we'll be careful, God, to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you, God, that this word did not go out and fall on deaf ears. Instead, Father God, this word was planted in the soil of our hearts today. And it just has given us the fire that we need to keep pushing forward Keep believing and keep expecting you, God, to do what only you can do in whatever our situations are. Thank you that your word went out and it accomplished what you sent it to do. I pray, I speak your blessings over every person under the sound of my voice. Bless them, God. Bless them in their mind, God. 
Bless them in their hearts, God. Heal hearts today. Bless them, Father God. Healing for their bodies, God. Healing for your seizures, Daniela. Father God, bless them in their finances right now, Father God. That they won't be struggling paycheck to paycheck, God. That they'll not only be able to pay their bills and live comfortably, but also to be a blessing to others. Bless them right now. Bless that marriage, Father God. Bring both a husband and wife to a place of humility and extending grace and love toward each other, God. Bless them, God. Bless their families, God. Bless their children. I speak household salvation right now in the name of Jesus. Bless our coming and our going, God. Thank you for your hedge of protection around us. Thank you for your favor that goes before us. Thank you for your peace. Your peace that's wrapped around us and your joy that is within us. We thank you, God, that you will help us to bloom, to blossom under the pressure so that we may become fully developed and mature in you. In Jesus' mighty name. And somebody say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is so good to see so many of you this morning. I thank you all for being here. You know, I always say to you how grateful I am. Um, Cathedra, it was great to see you. Kenny, great to see you. Jeanette, Daniela, um, Sister Linda, great to see you as well. Um, mommy, great to have you on here. Deanna, if you're still here. Um, I'm just so grateful for all of you who are here. Um, thank you for spending your morning with me. I pray that this message has really just blessed your soul. Um, please don't forget to click share and put this out, you know, um, in Facebook land where somebody may be encouraged that this is not the time to give up. Uh, this is not the time to turn around and go back. This is not the time to doubt God, but this is the time to continue enduring um, keep moving forward. Amen. God bless you, Sister Irene. Keep moving forward and so that we can do what? Cross the finish line, fully developed, mature, and lacking nothing in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Cathedra, this is that's great. All right. I love you all. Don't forget to click share. Have a fabulous Friday and an even greater weekend. Um, God spares life. Um, I more than likely will see you all um, uh, next week. We'll see how that goes because it's Thanksgiving, but I'm going to still try to come on here, even if it's just for a few minutes. All right. I love you all. God bless you. Have an awesome day. And thank you for joining me.